One of the best ways to ensure that you have a fulfilling adventure in Vardenfell is by limiting the amount of possible frustrating circumstances that you could find yourself in. So, much in the spirit of our Every Player Needs video, today we are showcasing four artifacts that will take your Morrowind quality of life to the next level. That being said, the final item is way overpowered, so don't get that one too early unless you like playing your game on easy mode. Let's get into it. So we're starting on the quest to improve our Morrowind quality of life. And for that first step, let's head over to Nissus from, of course, Ye Old Faithful starting grounds of Balmora. I feel like it's just the most central location. Like everybody's in Balmora, come on. Everybody's in Balmora. So we're gonna head to Aldrun, and then from Aldrun, we will head over to Nissus. And once we're in Nissus, we're gonna take a look at the old Silt Strider, give him a little pet here, good boy, good boy. And then we're gonna head um, over to Falas Ancestral Tomb. But first, what the hell is this guy doing? What are you doing? Hanob stole my pants, <laughs> okay, oh well, uh, that's that's not in this video. Look out for the pants video coming up uh, later. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to that guy. Wow, I totally forgot that was a thing real quick. But anyways, with the naked man in the river not distracting us anymore, you're gonna head directly south from the Silt Strider here to this little road. And then from this road, we're gonna head straight up the river, keeping Fort Darius over there. Uh, at our immediate left and then just beyond this rope here We are going to find Falas ancestral tomb, which is here. There we go And oh my god just saying the name Darius triggered like every horrible memory I ever had of playing League of Legends and being demolished by that character So hopefully I'm not the only one who had to suffer through all of that. But anyways here we are in Falas ancestral tomb Let's start clearing it out Got a scamp here Thankfully, our Sword of White Woe is putting in... Ooh, Ice Hytronach. Got uh, the Frosty the Snowman over here. And we are actually pretty tanky, believe it or not. Don't know how that spell missed. It kind of, like, literally just teleported through us. All right, he's down. Ooh, let's head in here. Urn. Ooh, there's nothing in here. Got a locked door, level 10. We're not interested in that. We're heading downstairs. Continuing our murder spree of the Daedra. Ooh, we don't have enough charge. I wonder if I can if I can rest in here. I actually can. Wow, I'm surprised there's not any other enemies. All right, well, with that out of the way, we're going to come up to the urn, which is labeled D. Bryant. But let's open up the urn. And sure enough, there it is. Din Stagmer's Ring. Value 12,000. Constant effect. Resist fire 30%. Resist frost 30%. And resist shock 30%. So how is this going to improve our quality of life? Well, it is going to improve our quality of life by making us incredibly tanky and super resistant against any spellcasters, mages, uh, people with elemental damage on any of their weapons, any Atronox that we run against. This is just honestly one of the strongest items that you can get in the game for tanking. And if you're a Nord, you already have those elemental resistances built in. This is pretty much going to make you impervious to any enemies that you come across. So definitely going to make your time in Morrowind much, much easier. Um, because, let's be honest, the real people dealing damage out in this game are mages or people with really enchanted elemental weapons. So, there we go. An incredible way to start off with Dinstagmer's Ring, the mysterious, mysterious artifact that not even Yagram Bagarn knows anything about. And he, and he wrote, he literally wrote a book on artifacts. So, if he doesn't know... No one's going to know. All right, now let's get back up here. Uh, can I? Yes, I can. Okay, we had to get a, little, get a little creative with our movement there. But next, we are... I come up here, and then I always forget that my guy glitched through the dock and won't go back up. So hold on. Now we can talk to him. Okay. But now we're going to go back to Aldrun, and then we're going to head to the Mages Guild, because we're going to go to Caldera and not visit the creeper. He hasn't seen us in a while. I actually haven't seen the creeper in a in my videos in a little bit. He's probably he's probably like, "What? Why why has coffee forsaken me? What is this guy? He's forgotten all about me." I'm sorry, Barnabas. You know, we'll we'll see you soon. But anyways, let's head over to Caldera. Go ahead, stranger. And then once in Caldera, we're going to go right across the street from Gorak Manor and visit Varric Germain, the trader. Not to be 
mixed up with Saint Germain, which is a fantastic liquor and awesome character from Castlevania. So here, here. But Varric here, not only does he have some fantastic duds, look at this guy, he's styling. He looks like he's about to walk out at like Coachella or something. I've never watched anything from Coachella. I'm, I'm not hip. I don't know what they look like. But anyways, oh, you'll have to get rid of that moon sugar. Oh, I keep forgetting I have that on me. You know, it's sugar use that's uh, making me forget that I have it on me, right? All right, all right, Jermaine, the drugs are out of my pocket and on your floor in front of the guard. So now we're both implicated, but at least it's out of my inventory, which for some reason means you're going to do business with me now. So let's ask him again to barter. And here we are looking for something that you should get honestly right when you start. I recommend this item especially for new players. If you find yourself having a tough time in some early dungeons or early caves, maybe running into some tough enemies on some quests and are just dying a lot or, ha or having to run away from fights, this particular item is going to make your life a lot easier and it's super to get. You can buy it right away at level one when you start. And this is going to be the Ring of Aversion, value 63, cast when used, and it is going to give you invisibility for 10 seconds on self. So what this is going to do when you put it on and use it is going to give you a way to immediately de-aggro yourself from any enemies that are following you and to get out of a hairy situation that you find yourself in. And the greatest thing about the Ring of Aversion is that it is an enchanted item. So you can restore the charge just by resting, just by waiting, get, allowing some hours to pass to refill it when you've used up all the charges that you have. And boom, there you go. You don't have to buy potions of invisibility. You just have to wear this ring and rest every now and then. Oh, max sale. Let's no, no, you're only getting what I, uh, what the value is or okay. Maybe a little more. I, what? Okay, this guy doesn't like me. He heard me talking about his duds. He's not He's not into Coachella, uh, apparently. All right, all right, all right. I'll give him double. I'll give him double. Come on. Jeez, just buy, just buy it. Just let me buy the ring. Oh, my God. 200. What is happening right now? Okay, hold on. What is my disposition with this guy? All right, we'll buy the ring, and it's 11. What have I done to this man? Let me bribe him. Maybe maybe then he'll let me buy the ring. All right, so maybe it's not 63 uh, gold. Let, let's try Let's try it again. 75. Okay. We'll just be in this for 175 gold. That was really strange. I've never had that happen before. Okay. Well, for giving me such a hard time, let me show you how this ring works, actually. Let me give you a live demonstration. So here we go. Ring of Aversion is now equipped. We're going to come over here to our magic items. We're going to select it by clicking on it here, clicking R to ready it as our spell. All right, actually, before you ready the ring, you do have to start the fight, but just remember, Who's click that R, pull the ring up. So here we go, three, two, one. What do you want? Death! <laughs> Resist arrest. This is what you get for disrespecting me. He has a massive hammer, oh my God. All right, that he, he drives a tough bargain, man. He drives a tough bargain, but... Uh, here we go. We're cornered. We're getting attacked by the guard. And three, two, avert. Look at that, baby. Scott free. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how you get away with murder. All right. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, maybe you can't get too far, but uh, uh, the, the, the point stands. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god, we got the whole freaking goof troop. They brought the dogs in. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, who had the kill streak? Okay, three, two, one. Let's get out of this. Boom. Isn't this thing great? Let me tell you, you want to have a good time tomorrow? Just go ahead and grab yourself uh, one of these. One hour later. All right, well, now that the uh, blood and money has been washed off of our hands, um, and I say money because, well, I, all I did was end up paying the guards. <laughs> How much does a life cost in Marwind? Apparently 1,040 gold, in case you were wondering. Pretty cheap, actually, uh, if you ask me, but what do I know? Okay, let's, let's move on here. We're going to move to, first, Vivek for the next item that we are going for. Well, actually, next two items that we're going for. Uh, ho, 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 cutting down on travel costs, being efficient now. And then once here, we are going to travel to Hala Uwad. And then from Hala Uwad, we're going to head to Narmak. 
And then from Narmak, we're going to head to Kull. Make it quick. All right, now once we are in Kull, and you can also just take the Silt Striders to get here. For some reason, the boat was on my mind. Um, we're actually going to stay here at the docks. And what we're first going to do is step out onto this boat. And if you have your draw distance high enough, you can see just barely over there the shining of a campfire and that is going to be where our item is. So let's hop in the water and start swimming. And, oh god, of course. Slaughterfish. Every time. We're going like five feet. Come on. Then there's three after us. Alright, well, with that out of the way, let's put this away and head towards that campfire. Uh, and this is actually an unmarked island, so it doesn't have a name. So just know that you need to go to the docks and then head northwest from Cull. And then once here you will see a bedroll. But that's not the item. The item is actually this right here. This is the Pilgrim's Lantern. And what this is, is, ooh, hey, look, we got a little key under it too. And the key, the key actually goes to the, this chest uh, right over here. But first, let's talk about the Pilgrim's Lantern. So let's pull up our inventory, click on over, and you'll see the Pilgrim's Lantern right here in the middle weight one value 100 why is this random lantern on an island actually worth a hundred gold well let's equip it and talk about it so why what makes it worth that much and just for starters the first thing is because this lantern has a lifespan of one second here let me check 999 million 999,999 seconds which equates to about 32 years. So if you lit this lantern when Morrowind came out, you would still have a decade of burn time left on it. So it, you, you grab this lantern, you never have to worry about torches or candlesticks or anything again. Just don't jump in the water with it. Uh, let me, so actually, let me unequip it here. But another fun little fact about this is that it has actually double the shine radius of any other light source in the game so it's going to illuminate more of the dungeons and be incredibly helpful especially if you are using any high contrast mods that you know increase the darkness uh, in, in your underground caves or areas or or honestly anywhere where you would want night eye so this is just going to save you that spell save you from buying torches or worrying about picking up torches etc etc pretty cool item and you know nice and easy to get right off the docks there in cull but now we're going to go somewhere a little more interesting for a big, you know, grand finale here, of course, in classic coffee fashion. So let me pull up our maps. And we're essentially going right over here. And I'll give you a little bit of a more accurate look when we get there. But first, we're just going to head out along this road. And essentially, we're just going to make our way down to the coast and then head east along it, trying not to die uh, along the way, which is sometimes harder than you think it would be in this game. So we swum along the coast east here, and then once we make it to this derelict ship, we actually want to start heading inland. So let's head up from the ship. I wonder if there's more pillows on that one, eh? <laughs> Probably not. I would wager not many people are just, you know, mass importing pillows like Jorane. So once we've done that, there's a little break in the mountains once we've come up from the boat. And we can actually head into where we need to go right down here, which is Ibar Dad. And let me give you a look here on the map at where we are. And let's head inside. So what is in here exactly? Well, I don't want to ruin it immediately, but it is something that you will definitely want if you are any kind of heavy armored player. Although every single player in the game can benefit from it immensely. And there's a mage, so let's rush. We got a greater bone walker down at the bottom, so we gotta kill this person quick. Hoping those are summons. They are not summons. Okay, there we go. They're down. Did she summon the bone walker? Ooh, there's a Daedroth too. Okay, hold on. She did summon the Bone Walker because it disappeared. So let's let's head down, take the Daedroth out. God, I forget. I forget how tough these guys are. They're freaking made of nails. He's got that shield on. 
Come on, man. You know what he looks like? He kind of looks like the Spinosaurus from, like, the OG Jurassic Park, but without the spines. Like, look at that head. That's, like, the exact same kind of head that that dinosaur had. Oh, God, no, I'm staggered. I'm staggered. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Oh. Well, oh. Yeah, you better run. <laughs> Showed him. I think he's, uh... I think he's having a moment. You know what? We'll just leave him be. Yeah, he's he's having a conniption. Come on. Ooh, that almost looked like a paralyzed spell of some kind. Whew. Okay, that went well. Let's see what Alante has. The Belt of Orc Strengths Fortify Attribute. That's not too great, but we'll take it. Uh, but let's grab her key and some potions. Let's go ahead and grab her potions. Now, once she's dealt with, let's uh, head into the gate here, which we unlocked with the plain key. So you do need to grab that unless you have a lock picking spell of some sort. Now I'm going to come down here and head right. And then things are about to get hairy. So let's grab a quick save. Let me make sure my ring of aversion's on. And look at this. This is where it's going to come in handy. We got two Draymore Lords. We got a Golden Saint. All right, come here, my pretties. Come here. Come in. Come in the water with me. Yes. Come, come. Let me show you the way. See, this is, this is how you play Morrowind. Think smarter. Don't work harder. That's totally how the saying goes. But we're going to basically just leash these fools way far away because, you know, I'm assuming some, you're, you're doing this at a lower level. Maybe you just don't want to fight them right now. I'm not going to ring of aversion. Swim under our little thing. So now that I've ring of aversion away, we can come up because they are stuck on the geometry and not following us. And now we can loot to our heart's content. Now, this is where you are going to need your unlock spell. So be sure that you have a level 70 unlock spell. If you don't know how to do that, watch my end game in 15 minutes guide. I'll talk about how to get one there. It's quite simple, but come up here. We're gonna unlock the door. Once we have the door unlocked and opened, boom, that right there is what we came for. But that is just the icing on the cake. Let's take a quick look around as this is the corpse of a grand warrior. Here we have a Daedric battle axe, 50,000 gold. Face of inspiration, 13,000 gold. Daedric shield, 34,000 gold. And then a whole bunch of ancient silver daggers. Oh, and a ghost. Let me just get rid of that guy real quick. I'm going to hit levitate. We're going to fly up here. And then this at the top is not just decoration. This is Ilodon's ward. Value 200,000. Restore health 50 to 100 points for one second on self. But let's take a look at this incredible item. So you can see here that not only is this a absolutely magnificent, badass looking shield, this is also a 50 to 100 point heal on demand that you can reuse, recharge all the time. So just to show the power of this, uh, we are at 65, we need 95 to be full. Gonna click it, full health, and look at that, still literally at full charge. So Elitant's <laughs> Ward, you can just spam this sucker I'm just clicking it like crazy, not even losing charge. Look at that. This item is one of the best items in the game and is literally the best shield in the game for heavy armored. It has the highest armor rating of any shield. So if, again, if you're playing a tank player, this is a must have when you're in the very, very late game. I don't recommend getting this too early because it does kind of break the game with immediate on the spot healing all the time. But if you're just looking for a nice casual playthrough or you're already end game and the game is broken anyways, Elodin's Ward is one of the best items that you can have in Morrowind and is certainly going to improve your quality of life when playing the game. So to close here, let's recap what Morrowind looks like for us now. Well, we don't have to worry about getting in a fight that we don't want to avoid with the Ring of Aversion. Again, very easy to get early. Only 63 gold in Caldera. We don't have to worry about light sources because we have the Pilgrim's Lantern. We'll no longer have to worry about things like Night Eye or buying torches or more candlesticks as long as we don't jump in the water and break it. And then additionally, we don't have to worry about getting killed right off the bat with 
any elemental spells. We have 30% resistances now, and if we're a Nord, we're pretty much impenetrable. And on top of that, we have Elidence Ward, the literal best shield in the game with the highest armor rating and a repeatable 50 to 100 point heal for one second. So if this hasn't improved your quality of life in Morrowind, I don't know what will. So all that you have left to do now is, of course, hit that subscribe button and then go get these items for yourself and try them out. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one.